Okay, PragerU, which is a YouTube channel, not a university, has released a video called Are Humans More Valuable Than Animals? It's from 2017, so it's a bit dated, but I feel like it's still worth going through to see what nonsense they spew in here, so let's check it out. Are you more valuable than a dog? Uh, I mean, on my system, I am. Or a cat? Sure. Or for that matter, a tree? Well, no, trees are highly sentient beings. One of the biggest differences between Judeo-Christian values and secular values concerns this very issue, the worth of the human being. According to the Judeo-Christian value system, human beings are infinitely valuable. That's a hilarious position. Imagine saying that it's a choice of murdering a human or causing infinite suffering. So you have a choice to kill the human and there's not infinite suffering, or not kill the human and there is infinite suffering. Apparently, on Prager's view, it would be preferable to not kill the human and cause infinite suffering. That's insane. On the other hand, secular humanism devalues the worth of humans. That, that's a hilarious graphic. Apparently, the human is equal to or less valuable than a tree. So just so you know, secular humanists, I guess you're committed to that position, according to Dennis Prager. As ironic as it may sound, the God-based Judeo-Christian value system renders humans infinitely more valuable than any humanistic value system. The reason is simple. If there is no God... Well, I'd have to know exactly how he means humanistic, but like, look, you could create a system that doesn't have a God that still says humans are infinitely valuable. So it's not necessarily that you need a God to believe that. But I think most people would just look at the consequence, or at least I would look at the consequences of believing that and go, hmm, okay, so if I think that humans are infinitely valuable, I'm committed to these batshit insane positions, like that I would sooner cause infinite suffering than allow a human to be murdered. I mean, that's just lunacy. So that would be why I don't accept something like that. God, human beings are only material beings, and therefore not worth anything beyond the matter of which they are composed. It's not true. I mean, if it's... Look, there's there's views that say that there's a non-natural component to human beings, right? Maybe they'll say consciousness is a non-natural property. That's a view that's out there, right? And it's not a religious view. So I don't know what you mean when you say that without um, Judeo-Christian values, humans are just... or belief in God or whatever you said, that humans are just material beings. There's views that don't invoke God that say that there is a non-natural component to human beings. But in the Judeo-Christian system, human beings are created in the image of God, meaning that human life is sacred. In other words, we are either created in the image of carbon atoms, and therefore not worth much more than carbon. No, we're not created in the image of carbon atoms. We're created, we're, we're made, carbon atoms are, are in us. It's, there's a difference. Or we are created in the image of God, and therefore infinitely valuable. You could have infinite value on a system that doesn't invoke God, right? You don't need God to hold a system that says that humans are infinitely valuable. And I think the basis for rejecting a system like that is just the absurd consequences it produces. Does, does anyone really think that if you've got a choice of causing infinite suffering or murdering someone, that you should, <laughs> that you should cause the infinite suffering? I mean, that's just, that's just a hilarious position. If you don't agree with that, you're not going to say humans are infinitely valuable. Our secular post-Judeo-Christian society has rendered human beings less significant than at any time in Western history. I'm not going to comment on the history. I don't know enough about history. First, the secular denial that human beings are created in God's image has led to humans increasingly being equated with animals. Okay, so... Here, if someone knew a lot of history, they'd be able to probably make points a bit better than me here. But I don't know how he's getting this implication, that it's specifically just the uh, denial that humans are created in God's image that's leading to um, humans being viewed as <laughs> apparently equal to, or at least closer to equal to, animals. I mean, what other forces might there be? We could talk about the progress of moral philosophy. Uh, we could talk about... Um, understanding of biological evolution. There's a lot of things that could make us realize our 
closeness to animals other than just a uh, rejection of the notion that we're created in God's image. That's why. And, and if you want to say that one factor is responsible for the historic trend, I think you actually have to provide some data for that. For the course of 30 years of asking high school and college students if they would first try to save their dog or a stranger, two thirds have always voted against the person. They either don't know what they would do or they actually vote for the dog. And many of um, Yeah, so now I don't agree with that. I think that, um, you know, the saving the dog, there's gonna be less well-being if you save the dog than the human. I think you should save the more sentient being. So, you know, if, if people think that, people think that. But um, I don't know that you can attribute, again, I don't know you can purely attribute that to a decline in Judeo-Christian values. Um, and either way, we can create moral systems that aren't based on religious nonsense, where that conclusion is not what you'd reach, right? There are secular systems like utilitarianism that could tell you that um, the human should be saved and not the dog. The adults now vote similarly. Why? There are two reasons. One is that with the denial of the authority of higher values, such as religious teachings, people increasingly make moral decisions on the basis of how they feel. Does he, does he really, that. whoa, no, does he really know Secular that? Value. Let's just go back to how they feel. Um. Reasons. One is that with the denial of the authority of higher values, such as religious teachings, people increasingly make moral decisions on the basis of how they feel. Right, so do you actually have some kind of evidence to support that? How do you know they're not using some alternative moral system, right? How do you know that it's just a feelings-based evaluation? And how do you know that they weren't, um, that, I mean, how do you separate the feeling component in the Judeo-Christian view? Like, do you know that people's feelings were cutting against their Christian values and they were selecting the Christian values over their feelings? Or was it just that the Christian values were, in fact, what they felt? So you haven't actually given any data to show that there's an increase in feelings-based um, moral decision-making, however exactly we're defining that. And since just about everybody feels more for their dog than for a stranger, many people simply... And, and even, even if that is the case, right, that doesn't somehow establish that your morality is correct. That's just you showing a consequence that you don't like. They choose the dog? The other reason is that once you get rid of Judeo-Christian values, there's no reason for elevating human worth over that of an animal. Well, I mean, the reason would just be with respect to your ethical system. You can hold an ethical system that says humans are more valuable without invoking God. Why would that be? Well, I mean, what is confusing about that? You could just say, oh, okay, um, a being's value is based on how much well-being they're able to bring into the world. A human uh, is capable of bringing more well-being into the world, therefore they're more valuable than a dog. Or you could have a rights model that just says that the rights are stronger for the human. You don't need to invoke religion to um, create a system that says that humans have more value than animals. And no reason, I mean, in my view, the reason is just going to come down to what you value. Right? So you could value humans more than animals without believing in any religious nonsense. That's why people estranged from Judeo-Christian values, including many Jews and Christians, support programs such as Holocaust on your plate. Oh God, okay, so let's, let's see this. Now, what did he say was the reason that we accept that now? Was he saying it's the decline of Judeo-Christian values? Elevating human worth rid of judeo-christian values there's no reason for elevating okay so it's getting rid of christian values that causes causes people to accept um notions like the holocaust on your plate so how he knows that it's the decline of judeo-christian values and not um attributable to other factors like progress in moral philosophy i mean who knows but that's prager you for you and uh, even if that is the case, let's just examine the systems and see what they say, right? I can point out a hilarious reductio on your system. If you're saying humans have infinite value, you have to choose to preserve human life even at the expense of causing infinite suffering, right? Most people, I think, are going to say, hmm, creating infinitely more suffering than the Holocaust or murdering someone. Yeah, I'm going to say you should murder the person, right? That's what I would say. Murder the fuck out of that person. Holocaust on your plate is a campaign developed by the animal rights group People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, 
PETA that teaches that there is no difference between the barbecuing of chickens in America and the burning of Jews in the Holocaust. No difference is a bit of a straw man, right? How about the fact that it's a chicken or that there's, there's a barbecue, right? Of course there are differences, but there's a comparison to be made. I mean, first of all, both are holocausts, right? So what we're doing to animals is slaughter on a mass scale. That is a holocaust that just meets the definition, right? And with respect to the moral analogy, right? Um, based, on, based on your value system, you may very well see an analogy there. If you care about well-being and suffering, you're certainly going to say that the animal holocaust is a, a horrendous moral evil. In fact, arguably worse than the human holocaust, just on the basis of size, right? So my position would be that if you had an equivalently sized animal and human holocaust, the animal holocaust would be less bad than the human holocaust but at some point you're just killing so many more animals that it's going to be worse than the human holocaust an easy way to kind of uh like like an intuition pump to get you to realize this is ask yourself would you rather go through the experience of every human in the nazi holocaust or every animal in the animal holocaust well i mean if you think <laughs> if you if you'd rather die um you know just trillions or quadrillions of times however however many animals have been killed in the animal holocaust at that point go crazy but it seems patently obvious to me that there's less suffering in the nazi holocaust so i'm gonna select that um so yeah whether there's an analogy there is just going to depend on what your values are and if you care about anything like well-being there's certainly going to be an analogy why because a human and a chicken but, but saying there's no difference is just like a straw man are of equal worth yeah you don't, you don't have to hold that position to say that there's something wrong with the animal holocaust or to call it a holocaust right you don't have to say they're of equal worth you could say the chicken is of less worth but we are still holocausting them which is just you know the the holocaust part is just factually accurate we are holocausting chickens whether they're of less or equal worth depends on the moral view. I certainly don't think they're of equal worth. I still think it's a holocaust, though. So, too, in a notorious Tucson, Arizona case, a woman screamed to firefighters that her three babies were in the burning house. Thinking that the woman's children were trapped inside, the firefighters risked their lives to save the woman's three cats. If you think these two examples are either just theory yeah, I mean, I think that it's noble to actually go in and save those cats. They're sentient beings who are going to get burned to death. If you're able to save them, I think that would be the good thing to do. What's wrong with that? What's, what's wrong with you for thinking that there's some kind of problem with that? Theoretical, the dog stranger question, or extreme, the Tucson mother of cats. Here's an issue that is neither theoretical nor extreme. More and more people believe, as PETA does, that even if it would lead to a... What a, what a weird way of thinking. I also, it's always a sign of sloppy thinking to me when people give these weird separations, like theoretical or extreme. Well, presumably on your view, both are extreme. So why are you even making a separation there? That's weird. Cure for cancer or AIDS, it would be wrong to experiment on animals. In fact, wait a second. Needs, Who says does, that? That even more and more people believe, as PETA does, that even if it would lead to a cure for cancer or AIDS, it would be wrong to experiment on animals. Well, it depends what we mean by experiment, right? So the way that I would determine if we'd accept it is I'd ask, okay, now, would we experiment on a human in this situation? Right? If the answer is no, then my question would be, what's true of the animal that, if true of the human, would allow us on our moral system to experiment on them? If there is nothing we can name, it would be inconsistent to experiment on the animals. Um, if we can find some property, then we'd be in a situation where it's morally justified. Right? And please notice also that there's tons of experimentation that we could do on humans that we don't do despite the fact that it could yield beneficial scientific information because we determine that it's unethical right so all that i'm saying is that whatever kind of 
morality we're applying in the human context, we should be logically consistent and apply in the animal context as well. That does not mean that we should hold all the same positions for animals that we hold for humans. It means that in any case where we're proposing differential treatment, we have to be able to point to something true of the animal that if true of the human would cause us to accept the treatment in question for the human. In fact, many animal rights advocates believe that even to save a human life, it would be wrong to kill a pig. Yeah, I mean, I think I think that that's see, that's a straightforward enough example where you're not using some weird big blanket term like animal testing. That's a straightforward enough example where I could give you an opinion. I would hold that position. Now, if you think that you have a case against that position, all I would want to know is what's true of the pig that if true of a human would justify killing a human to save a human life, right? So maybe we'll say, oh, the pig is less intelligent. Okay, well, do you think it's all right to kill a disabled person to save your life? Right, so I'm just wondering what the property is. Now, if you can name one, it would be a consistent view to say, yeah, it's fine to kill the pig. I can't name one, so I am not going to say that it's okay to kill a pig to save a human life. To obtain a heart valve. The 20th century showed vividly what happens to humans. The funny thing is people love to treat that like some kind of reductio on veganism, but I've never actually seen a good response to what I just said there, okay? So this is one of the more counterintuitive positions that you'll get, because it seems like, oh, saving a human life, you know, animal is less valuable. It seems like we'd probably want to kill the animal, right? But we have to look at whether our moral system is consistent, right? Whether it's consistent on your system or not hinges on whether there is something true of the animal that, if true of a human, would justify killing a human to save a human life. If there is no such thing on your view, then I don't know how you're claiming to consistently reach the position that it's okay to kill an animal to save a human's life. And worth when Judeo-Christian value. The 20th century showed vividly what happens to human worth when Judeo-Christian values are abandoned. Oh, okay, so so now we're getting the uh, veganism is going to lead to um, the Holocaust or something, or like Mao's China? Like what? What are you going to say? Nazi Germany and the various communist regimes all rejected Judeo-Christian values and ended up slaughtering the largest number of people in human history. Right, so I almost think that this, if you were to like try to formalize something like this, it would probably come out like affirming the consequent, like... If these societies rejected Judeo-Christian values and ended up killing tons of people, then, um, actually, no, I can't do it all formally in my head right now, but it's just the, the weirdness is suggesting that because certain people, there's, there's cases where Judeo-Christian values have been rejected and tons of people have been killed, that it's necessarily going to be the case that if Judeo-Christian values are rejected, then tons of people are going to be killed. You can also point to plenty of people who reject Judeo-Christian values and completely denounce anything like the Nazi or communist regimes that existed in the 20th century. For Nazism, Jews and members of other non-Aryan groups were declared worthless and murdered in the millions. For communists, human worth was determined solely by communist parties which murdered tens of millions of people. Only by rejecting Judeo-Christian values could Nazis declare Jews, Slavs, and others subhuman. <laughs> well, you could, you could hold a value system other than Judeo-Christian values that doesn't say that Jews, Slavs, and others are subhuman. So why do we need Christian values to not get a Holocaust? And only by rejecting Judeo-Christian values could communist regimes slaughter those they called class enemies individual human life meant nothing meanwhile human slavery was abolished only in the judeo-christian world and of course for nearly all those who reject judeo-christian values so, so just pointing pointing to good things that happened in um societies that were christian bad things that happened in societies that were uh more like atheistic or you know that, that reject those values whatever okay let's just Let's just think about it. Are you going to say there's not bad things that have happened under Judeo-Christian values? Are you going to say there's not good things that have happened under atheistic values? And then the real question is, why would it be the case that um, that it's it, why would it necessarily be the case that if we accept some other value system, it's going to lead to these kind of things, right? We can accept a value system that says sentient beings are of moral value, where it would be 
wrong to holocaust people right but it would also be wrong to holocaust animals so i don't understand how you're saying that the abandon like if you're trying to say anything along the lines of the abandonment of judeo-christian values is necessarily going to produce a holocaust that is just absurd okay i can reject those values and i'm never going to say that it's appropriate to holocaust people and others are perfectly capable of doing the same thing values the human fetus is worthless if it's mother <laughs> well i mean what are we talking about are we talking about um, at the very beginning of the pregnancy, when the thing is not even sentient? Sure, of course it's worthless. It's a bundle of cells. What would be the basis for saying that it has value? I mean, it's going to depend, I guess, on your moral view. Now, once it's sentient, it certainly has value, and it should be considered seriously in a moral sense. Mother deems it so. Finally, there is an increasingly vocal part of the environmentalist movement that also denigrates human worth. For these individuals, the human being is not infinitely precious. Trees and rivers and mountains are. Okay, well, look, there's some people who might say that those objects are, like, intrinsically valuable or something, more so than a human. That would seem like a loopy position to me. But what I would say is that <clears throat> trees, mountains, and rivers are instrumentally valuable because they're necessary for the well-being of sentient beings, right? So there's a reason we don't care about the greenhouse effect on Venus, right? The greenhouse effect on Venus is a lot worse than it is here. The global warming on steroids, right? But nobody cares about it morally because it's not affecting sentient beings. So my concern for the environment is wholly instrumental and uh, others could take the same position. So. Are you more valuable than a dog or a cat or a tree? That depends on your value system. Sure, and there are value systems that are not Judeo-Christian that say that you're more valuable than all three. I'm Dennis Prager. I'm Isaac Brown. Okay, so I think that, what's that the end? Yeah, we've reached the end of this Prager U video. So my question is just, would would Dennis Prager ever actually have someone on to legitimately discuss animal rights with him? I would love to go back and forth with Prager University. Prager University follows me on Twitter, actually. They started following me sometime last year. So, you know, I would be happy to discuss veganism with any of their people. I don't think they have a defensible position. I think they'll end up saying completely wacky nonsense if they ever try to defend such a position. And end note, I just say you can reject magic-based value systems like Judeo-Christian values and still accept that humans are more valuable than than rocks or, or dogs and also reach the position that it's not okay to holocaust um, dogs. You can holocaust all the rocks you want. Okay, that's all for today. If you guys like my stuff, consider supporting on Patreon. Buy some merch. It's all linked below. Till next time.